Well, we're back with another simple but not basic video. As you can see by the title of the video, we're talking about my all fragrance go-tos, at least so far this season that I really wanna get on your radar. I really think you guys should try if you're looking for some new stuff to try. These are fragrances I've worn in the past couple weeks that have really moved me or I've really enjoyed wearing. That's it. This might be the shortest intro I've ever done. Let's dive right into it. To be honest with you, if I had to pick one fragrance that is new to my collection this year that I think I've gotten some of the most wearing from, it would have to be Ormond Man from Ormond Jane. This stuff has been sweeping me away. It is a fragrance I have to kind of keep myself from wearing. Otherwise, if I don't know what to wear, this is what usually occupies my mind because I've been wearing the heck out of it. And it's a fragrance that intrigued me when I first tried it years ago. And I'm so happy to have come back to it. It's a very easy everyday wear fragrance. If you're asking me, this is fresh and clean, but in a way that is high quality, that is definitive and has personality. You get some sharp and fresh juniper berry, which really brings most of the aromatic freshness you get out of the scent. So when you smell it in the air, it smells mostly fresh, but you do get this kind of warm, nutty woodiness, almost a little bit sweet. And there's some musk that kind of envelops the scent that makes it kind of sexy, even though it is more sophisticated than alluring, I would say. I think there might be some cardamom in here, one of my favorite fresh spicy elements that adds a little bit of sweetness as well and kind of increases the allure factor, so to speak. This is a fantastic no brainer signature fragrance that has depth and interest. You don't come across that very often. This one is going down in the books is one that I'm loving for that type of function. Let me know if you've checked out Ormond Man from Ormond Jane. There's going to be a link down below to check it out. It turns out that a majority of the fragrances that we're talking about in this video are ones I just got this year. And as I'm sure you do, whenever you get new fragrances, you wear them the most, especially more than some of your older fragrances, at least for a period of time. And then maybe you'll kind of revert back to some old ones. But this one's also new to my collection. I've only had it for a few months and it is a Creed fragrance that does get crapped on a bit because I guess it just doesn't perform as well as people would hope for the type of scent that it is. I guess that's nothing to be surprised about with Creed in general so you be the judge of that whatever is going to work for you and what you're looking for but i'm a fan of it i've been loving the wearing experience it's very classy but very easy to wear this is called Tabarone millicene one that is not talked about often i could describe this fragrance in a number of ways i could say that it is a fresh light almost citrusy dusty tobacco fragrance with a little hint of this saltiness with that fresh quality that makes it a light tobacco, something to wear for the slightly warmer days. It could even be a summer tobacco. I like to wear it for warmer fall days and I do like to save it for the daytime, but a perhaps more associative and understandable description I could give is our Imagine Millicene Imperial toned down on the aquatic feeling with no fruits and adding tobacco to it, adding a bit of a dusty tobacco. You kind of get that vibe. They are connected in some way. I I wouldn't say they're redundant to own, but I will say that if you like Millicene Imperial, you'll probably like this as an offshoot of it, almost like it could have been a flanker of Millicene Imperial. Kind of weird, but that's what I'm getting in my mind and in my experience. Let me know if any of you guys enjoy Tabarone Millicene again. Not often talked about, but I'm digging it. From a British house with South African roots. This brand is called Aqualis, and I had got to know this brand a little bit over the past few months. I actually did a live stream unboxing some fragrances they sent me and experiencing them and just having a grand old time. You can check out that live stream here if you missed it. You wanna get more of an intro into the house, but I will give you a brief overview of this one fragrance that I have worn and enjoyed, and there's others I have that I look forward to wearing more. This is called Coda. And this is kind of a rose oud fragrance. It is sweet, a little bit jammy. There is this round, almost nutty, dark oud quality to it. It is a little medicinal, but not stinky or anything. It is a beautiful blend. It has great quality. It's a soft profile. The scent lingers and it hangs around for a while, but I actually don't detect it a ton around me when I wear it. It sits a little close and I get sillage every now and then, but it's a rose oud with a spicy element, maybe a little bit of cinnamon in there. Ultimately, it doesn't really smell the most off the wall as far as rose oud fragrances go. It will remind you of others in some ways, but the way the scent behaves is very unique. You don't find rose oud fragrances that typically wear light. A lot of the times they're pretty heavy. This one, I'm not 
not going to say it disappears or it's just undetectable, but the way it moves through the air, it doesn't just slap you in the face. You have to kind of chase it and look for it a bit. I smelled it for like 10 plus hours throughout the day I wore it again in and out. It just moved me. I loved the experience. It was very nuanced and very enjoyable. That is Coda from Aqualis. More to come from this brand. They have one fragrance I have not yet worn and I cannot wait to wear it and share it with you guys. This next one up is actually my scent of the day. This is what I would call a late summer, early fall fragrance. It is something that could shine with heat. It does have a little bit more of a fresher profile, but it has some depth to it, especially some warm, spicy elements that make it perfect for slightly cooler fall days or even autumn evenings from Hermes. This is Voyage d'Hermes. Parfum. Man, this stuff is so beautiful. Great quality for a designer fragrance perfumed by Jean-Claude Elena, who also perfumed a fragrance that smells similar to it. Cartier Declaration. Love that one too. For those of you who don't like Declaration, you might like this because Declaration has that cumin element that is not everybody's jam. I happen to like it. I'm weird, but I dig this stuff and I think it is a little bit more accessible than Declaration. It comes off even a little bit more natural, but it's more on the green side. Green, fresh, spicy, slightly bitter citrus and woods. Elegant and classy without being overly formal or anything that needs to be taken too seriously. I wore it today in this attire, just working out at a cafe. Not working out, but I was working and I was out at a cafe and was smelling it all around me and really just enjoying it, enjoying my sillage and my scent bubble. Been really digging this stuff. Let me know if you've tried it. That is Hermes Voyage d'Hermes Parfum. I always know that with the House of Zerjoff, if I need something that smells a little bit complex, that smells classy, and also something that will last pretty much the whole day, if I need that functionally, I can always go with Zerjoff. And I chose this one the other day. This is 40 knots. I wore this on a long day out. It was a little bit warmer, but not too warm. And this is one of those fragrances that I think is a good straddler. It straddles the slightly warmer and cooler days perfectly because it's not what it seems when I first bought this, I thought it was going to be kind of a fresh maritime, like salty marine scent. Yeah, not at all. This is more of an ambery, powdery, sweet fragrance with woods, but a little bit of a salty top. It does kind of have the feeling of ocean air, not really the water though. And that mainly comes out a little bit more when there's some heat involved. And I was getting a little bit of that vibe. It does bring a touch of freshness, but it's mostly a little powdery and ambery, but it smells incredible in the air. It is very particular. I do kind of have to be in the mood for it. I was in the mood for it. And I love the way it dries down on my skin throughout the day, 12 or more hours later, I was still smelling it. In fact, I was still smelling it the following day when I jumped in the shower. As soon as that hot water hit my skin, my skin heated up, activated the scent again, and it was all around me all over again. So this stuff is no slouch. It will stay with you. If you need that, again, functionally, that's not what makes me like it. I love the scent of it and the scent experience, but it's a plus if you're looking for it. That's Zerjoff 40 knots. Let me know if you tried it. And if not, there's links down below. We got another designer fragrance. This is one I picked up this past summer. It is currently my favorite of the collection. I think it is the most superior of the collection, at least for me and my taste. I used to own the others in the collection over the years. They've been good, but this is just the best for me. From Chanel, Bleu de Chanel parfum this is just again superior now functionally not the same function with this scent i'm not wearing this on a hot day out casually no if i'm gonna be out during the day i'm dressing up a little bit more maybe something like this and it's not gonna be on the hottest day that's why i think this is perfect for fall even going into winter but it is still a fresher profile it will still shine with a little bit more warmth but if you know the Blit of chanel dna it's in here. It is fresh blue smelling, almost like shower gel. You get this citrus like grapefruit that's a little bit sharp, some woods. There is something sweet about it that is almost a natural amalgamation of certain notes. I couldn't tell you exactly what makes the slight sweetness in here, but it is very slight. It is mostly clean, but the parfum version as it should be is a darker version, it's slightly richer, but not necessarily stronger. So don't be fooled by the name. Doesn't just mean it's going to be more detectable, but I did spray a little heavier than I've sprayed in the past. I think I put on maybe six to seven sprays of this. I was actually smelling it like 10 hours later and really enjoying the scent. It's a little bit linear, but the quality is fantastic. It doesn't get old to me when I wear it, even if it's lasting that long. So this is a, a great one from Chanel. We're still waiting on a new DNA. So Chanel, your move, but this is good stuff. One of the old favorites on this channel. I've been rocking with it for 
over three years now, I want to say. And I think I've turned some of you guys on to this one. It is one of my favorites from the house of Maison Francis Kirk John. Gentle Fluidity silver this is a perfect pretty much all year round scent you could pull it off all seasons but i do think it shines with the straddle seasons again it does have a little bit of freshness and warmth and i think those transition seasons like spring and fall are perfect for a scent like this but you could pull it off in the summer it is a very intensely fresh fragrance with its juniper berry almost a gin like cooling freshness it does also have some musk in there and some amber and vanilla which add a bit of a sweet ambery warmth to the scent especially as it dries down it's a simple profile but it's actually quite unique although extremely approachable very wearable and surprisingly strong it doesn't make any sense but 15 plus hours with this fragrance no problem if you need that functionally once again this is one you can consider something that will have you smelling sophisticated and clean but interesting and i wouldn't say it's like quite as much of a go-to as some of the other fragrances i've talked about there is a little bit of an edge it is very specific you have to like juniper berry which is a sharp note not everyone's going to dig that i understand so this one is not as easy to wear as something like ormond man if you're asking me but i have no problem with it i love this stuff love the way it smells in the air gentle fluidity silver from mfk and finally from the house of tom ford honestly i hadn't worn this one in a little while it is one i have to be in the mood for and although it is an aquatic fragrance it's not one that i tend to reach for in the summertime this is not my go-to profile that i'm craving on a hot day or even a hot evening but i do think it would be fine in the evenings during the summer but it is an evening aquatic if you're asking me it has a darkness to it that just suits being slightly more dressed up when the sun is down especially when you're going out maybe to a nice dinner or some kind of event anything Thing where you're going to be more upscale this is a slightly daring fragrance but worn in this way works perfectly this is oud mineral again a dark aquatic I actually had to play a private event at the art museum in downtown and I wore this fragrance. I had to wear a black suit with a white shirt. I'll put a picture on screen. It was basically kind of a black tie event and I wore this fragrance and it suited it perfectly. It's a dry, smoky, woody, salty, kind of kelp-like aquatic fragrance. Very realistic smelling, but what it brings to mind is something dark, something kind of brooding and ominous, like a, an ocean during a storm. That's the vibe that I I get but it has an elegance to it it has an authoritative nature to it and it's a confident smelling scent i do reserve it for occasions like i discussed this is going to do well wearing black when you are dressed more confidently and you don't spray too much because this can become obnoxious if you overspray it i think i did three sprays of this and i could smell it all night long just for like six or seven hours while i was out but that's Oud Mineral. That's our final fragrance. Let me know if you've tried this one and if you enjoy it. All right, that's it. Just a few fall fragrances I've been digging lately. Maybe we'll do this again. I'd like to update you guys on what I'm actually wearing and enjoying. And I want to know if you guys have tried these fragrances. Once again, let me know in the comments. There's going to be links in the description to every fragrance we talked about. So do check them out if you haven't yet. And thank you so much for tuning in. Peace. I'll see you in the next one.